as far as you can see up the avenues of New York City. They came from all walks of life, but to demand one thing. Action on climate change. And in the sea of thousands of people, one blue cap worn by UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. He has high hopes for Tuesday's climate change summit, which will attract 125 global leaders. He thanked the crowd here for their energy and message. I'm overwhelmed by such a strong power and energy and voice of people. I hope uh, this uh, voice will be truly reflected uh, to the leaders when they meet on September 23rd. Climate change is a defining issue of our time, and there is no time to lose. But though world leaders will pledge action on climate change this week, there is little chance they will sign on to globally binding commitments. The economic divisions between the developing and developed world have long dampened chances for a global climate treaty with teeth. One of the purposes of this rally is to build pressure ahead of a key climate summit in Paris next year. And activists like Mark Ruffalo say countries are now seeing the economic benefits of reducing reliance on fossil fuels. And he says in some ways, China is leading the way. They know how expensive fossil fuels are. They've driven down the price of solar and, and because of that uh, they've made solar available to everyone and they've made solar actually cheaper in many of our states. The message here is also don't wait for governments to take action. The activists say we can all affect climate change by taking matters into our own hands, choosing whether to drive a car, what food we eat, how we consume. The power is in the hands of these people. When they go back to their states, their cities and their tribes and get real action going there, they will pull D.C. and the U.N. along. With all this noise, it's impossible not to hear the marchers and what they're saying. But the big question is, will the 125 leaders actually listen to what they say and take action on climate change? Nathan King, CCTV, New York.